let's calculate some limits. My first one, limit, it's x goes to 2, x squared minus 4x plus 4 over x squared minus 2x plus 1. So it's tempting to start by factoring, but let's just stick our point in and see what happens. So if I put 2 into the top and the bottom, okay, that's our rule for rational functions, I get 0 over 1, that reduces to 0, and so we're out of there. 0 is a perfectly good number, so that's going to be our limit. Okay. As a side, we can always check this. What do I do? I take a number that's very close to the point where we're taking the limit at, evaluate the function, and see what comes out. So if I put 2.1 in for x, I'll get 0.01 over 1.21, and that's going to be 0 0.008. That's very close to 0, so I believe 0 is a good answer. All right, let's try another. I'll take limit x going to 2. Same numerator, but in the bottom we'll put x squared minus 5x plus 6. So now when I try to evaluate, I'll get 0 over 0, and I know I need to do more work. So what will we do? We'll factor. We'll notice the x minus 2s are going to go away. So once I take them out, I put my 2 in, I'm going to get 0 over minus 1. Gives me 0 again, and that's a perfectly good number, so that's our answer. Again, we check. So if I put 2.01 in there, I'll get 0.01 over minus 0.99, and that's going to reduce to minus 0.01, which is very close to zero, so I believe that's my correct answer. Okay, try another. Limit x going to 2. I'll have x squared minus 2x plus 1 in the top, and then same denominator as before, x squared minus 5x plus 6. We put our 2 in there, and then I wind up getting a 1 over 0. So that does not exist. We can't divide by 0, so we're kind of stuck stopping right there. All right. Try something a little different. So here what's going to happen is we're going to get our 0 over 0. We're going to need a different trick than just factoring. So the trick that I'm going to use is going to be the difference of two squares. Okay, this trick is also called rationalization, depending on what book you're using. So what we're going to do, we're take the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared minus 4 over square root of x squared plus 5 minus 3. I put my 2 in there, and you'll notice we get 0 over 0. We could factor the top, but we're not going to be able to get anywhere with the bottom so that we could do something with the way the top factorizes. So we need another trick. So the idea is, well, how do you get rid of a square root sign if you have a sum or a difference? You multiply by the same thing, but you change the sign in the middle. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by radical x squared plus 5 plus 3. Top and bottom. What will happen? So in the bottom, what's going to happen, we're just going to change this to square this, square this, put a minus sign in the middle, a difference of two squares. So I'm going to get x squared plus 5 minus 9. So it's going to give me an x squared minus 4 which will match up with the x squared minus 4 on the top to cancel out. What's left over? Well, we still got to deal with this guy here, but we know our rule is just going to be evaluation. So I put a 2 in here, and what's going to happen? I'm going to get square root of 9 plus 3, which is going to give me a 6. Now, there's a whole big mess that we're starting off with, so we definitely want to check this one. So I'll put in 2.1 and see what happens. Put 2.1 into the top, we get a 0.41. Put it in the bottom, I get a 0.0676, rounded. And then we crunch that out, we're going to get a 6.07. And that definitely convinces me that I have the right answer here. Let's try some trig limits. So let's do limit x goes to pi over 3 of tan of x. So it's the rule for your trig functions. Evaluate. If a number comes out, you're fine. If a number doesn't come out, say you're dividing by 0, then does not exist. So let's see what we get. So if I put pi thirds into tangent, what are we going to get? That's going to be sine of pi thirds over cosine pi thirds. And i got to figure out what the sine and cosine for pi thirds are going to be. Now, pi thirds and pi sixths go together. They're going to pick up the values a half and radical 3 over 2. For their sine and cosine, we just got to figure out who gets which one. Now, for the sine, Sine is going to be the y value in the unit circle, 
And on the unit circle, I have that pi thirds is a bigger angle than pi sixths, so they're positioned this way. We notice pi thirds is going to have a bigger sign since it's higher up. So we're going to pick the bigger y value of 1 half and radical 3 over 2 for the sign of pi thirds. Okay, radical 3 over 2 is roughly 0 0.8. Our other value is a half, so the bigger of the two is going to be the radical 3 over 2. So pi, sine of pi thirds, radical 3 over 2, so its cosine is going to be 1 half. When I multiply top and bottom by 2, I get radical 3. Okay, note for tangent, the only way we're going to get in trouble is if I wind up hitting minus pi halves or pi halves or any multiples of those that aren't multiples of pi. Okay, one last one. So we'll use our special limits. So we have limit x going to zero of one minus cosine x over x squared. So you'll notice we're used to using one minus cosine x over x. So this one's got a little tweak to it. So how will we make something work here? Well, we're gonna use our difference of two squares trick again and pray that something works. So, you know, you stare at this for a while. You don't have a lot of tricks that you can bring in to make something out of this. One thing we can do is to get the top to turn to one minus cosine squared x, and then I can get sines into the picture, and then I know how to deal with sine x over x. So I'll do that. So we multiply top and bottom by one plus cosine x. It's promised, when it hits this, we're gonna get one minus cosine squared x, which is sine squared x. The x squared stays where it is, and then we'll have to deal with a leftover one over one plus cosine x. Okay, I break everything apart. So I have sine x over x, sine x over x, one over one plus cosine x, and I'll put my zero in to see what happens. So I know the first term is gonna to go to a one, second term is gonna to go to a one, then the third term, well, we put our zero in, I get one over one plus cosine zero, or one over one plus one, which is just a half. So my limit here is gonna be, one half. Okay, this thing's weird enough looking that I'm definitely going to check it. So I'm going to stick in a point one and see what comes out. So if I take one minus cosine of point one, that point one is in radians if you go to your calculator, and then I divide by the square of point one, which is 0.01, I'm going to get 0.4996. So I'm definitely convinced that the limit's going to be one half. 